Hi. Hang in there. I'm trying to get Facebook Live going. It doesn't seem to be cooperating tonight. Oh. Which could be in it. Yes. Some nights it does this. Yeah. I still don't understand why, but. Is definitely not cooperating. Hmm. That's not good. That is not good. I wonder if I clear my cache, if that'll work. I couldn't get my um, PowerPoint in Canva to save. It kept saving and they, they're like, oh, well, you have to reboot your computer and you have to clear your cache. And I'm like, I don't have to clear my cache to save a PowerPoint presentation. There's something- Yeah, I might have to shut my- I think I'm going to shut my computer down and restart it, Jackie, so I'll be on in a minute, all right? Okay, I'm going to go get water then. Okay. Peace out. I'm very serious when I'm on the phone in there. I'll come in. Write down what you need to tell me. working now? So far it's not. Ugh. Oh, it's freaking, this is the third time this has happened now. What is it that's causing it or caused it? I, she can't get through to Zoom, to Zoom's technical support. 
-hmm. It just started working the last couple of times on its own. And sometimes it doesn't. I have to guess that it's something to do with how many people are going on at once. Oh, probably. This seems to be like a super popular time for um, Facebook lives. I'm hiding in my bedroom because uh, my kids are here. They're downstairs. So okay. see, I think James is in there. There he is. <laughs> Thanks. Let's see what it says. Uh, Thanks, James. Wheel spinning. Oh well, maybe it'll go live on its own. You know, you, you you realize they knew what they were, right? The <laughs> curtains. So it's funny because they were here when I moved in, so I just left them. So I I didn't I didn't know that. <laughs> It's funny, so, you know, obviously with the salon named The Beehive, we try to incorporate honeycombs everywhere we can, so. Oh, okay. I, I didn't actually have those that. curtains in a box that before this crazy shit happened, we were gonna kind of do a little bit of a mild update, so. Hey James, can you, post to, uh, can you post to Facebook for everybody to get on the Zoom with the link and everything, because Facebook Live is not working, so if you can jump in a group. Yeah, and I'm already. Am I able to attempt this screen share thing? You can play. Well, why don't you test it now? You have some people in, so try it out. Yeah. So, so when you hit share, Jackie, yeah. it should have a couple of choices. One of them is to share like an app, I think it is. Let's say, I'll tell you what it is. It's a screen, a uh, whiteboard. I, hmm, maybe it doesn't in here. I think okay. you have to share the whole I screen. Mean, I'll just do the best I can with what I've got, you know, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've had a lot of, uh, is there like a mercury in retrograde or something again? Cause, uh, <laughs> it's, been, it's been in retrograde for like the last 12 months. It's like bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all the planets are in retrograde. Like, <laughs> yeah, even the planets we don't know of yet. It's like, uh, yeah. Let me check this signal because it seems like you guys are lagging a little bit. Let me check my signal. Speak for yourself. <laughs> speed best come on and it says I have zero speed <laughs> is anything working tonight there it goes alright that's not too bad not great but Better than nothing. We'll take it. And go live on Facebook is still spinning its wheels. How nice. So, all right, let me. Oh, no, it gives me the option. You must not have had anything open. Oh, that's probably what it was. There you go. Oh, perfect. So uh, James Nicholas isn't coming on tomorrow night, so we're going to take the night off um, for once in a blue moon. So I'll let everybody know once we get everything. I going. thought it was Mer Mercury in retrograde, not a blue moon. <laughs> no, it was a pink moon, wasn't it? <clears throat> I don't know. Okay. All right. So I have to share. I have to share it directly from Canva because I cannot get it downloaded, and their support department is super annoyed with me. I'm supposed Usually to like stick up my head and unplug my computer. Yeah, like I think you can download it. You can only download it as PDFs and then upload it into. Um, no, I was. I'm able to create. It's there's something wrong with the file. That specific file. I've sent it to somebody else. They can save it, but something, something is happening with the end user being a Mac user. Like so, it's a disconnect between that specific file. But I can I can download the other ones that I had perfectly fine, and it opens right up in Keynote. Um, but this one's not, sa it's not saving with anything in it on my computer. So I think that it's a corrupt file, which blows ass because it's like 21 slides that I'll have to redo <laughs> if I want to have them. You're ha let me ask you, you're having a problem. They're, are they done in Keynote? No, they're not done in Keynote. I did them in Canva. Okay. Let me send you the, the, the link, actually. Email me the slides because I'm good at cracking and getting them to work for some oh. reason. It's like... Um, my hacker background, for some reason, I can get things to upload in weird spots. But of course, I can't get Facebook to 
to, to post the message. So I have to go to my phone because I can't get Facebook to scroll up enough so I can click send to put the message on. What's your email? I'm not telling you that. We're recording. What are you, crazy? I already have all these wacko. I'll, I'll text it to you. I get, already getting <laughs> wackos messaging me all goddamn day long, fucking from Hawaii at four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, I'll, I'll, I'll DM it to you. Okay. Sorry, sorry Facebook for our, our, our Facebook our live is definitely right here tonight. But but Bella, listen, Bella knows, right? Bella, Bella, you can message me anytime you want. She always has really good questions, but I get like random questions, and I'm like, who are who are you, and why are you asking me? Like, I know. Who are you? <laughs> and and it's always like in the middle of the night too. It's like people, don't you sleep? We, here. you know. <laughs> I just DM'd you the link, actually. So. What happens? I'll, I'll get it to work. Don't worry. Okay. What happens when I save it on my computer is, it it saves as a PPTX file, right? Because that's PowerPoint presentation, PPTX or something like that. Anyway. Yeah. But it only shows the icon of the of Keynote. It doesn't show or well the podium podium. It doesn't show like the initial slide. Like I can't even get the slides to open. So, well, what you can do too, Jack, is you can you can save it as a PDF. Because okay. you don't want them to be able to edit it anyway. Right. And that's I, well, a little more that's, universal that's, now. I was able to save it in a PDF, but I still want the PowerPoint slides, you know. Yeah. Editable. Well, for you anyway, right? Yeah. All right, it's posted. Now I'm trying to find the damn link that I posted everywhere, and now I can't find it because there's 10,000 posts in here. <laughs> I know, right? What, what a day for posts. It's like uh, everybody decided to puke on Facebook. I'm trying, today. I know. I'm trying, I'm trying to find Jackie's picture. I know, I, I know I posted it in here at some point today with the link. You posted it around 11 a.m. Good, good luck with that. <laughs> it's like 100 posts since then. Right. There we go. I got it. It's funny. Hey, what's up, Oscar? Hey, sorry, guys. I apologize in initially if I'm a little ornery today. We already got bounced to potential round two with Chase for our PPP loan. So thank God the Cuban restaurant because we decided not to cook deliver sangria. So uh, my Mets 1969 Champion Cup is completely full. And what are you wearing, Oscar the Grouch on your hand? No, these are so. Um, it looks like Nancy's asking. Yeah. There are warmers. Like I, um, yeah, I love fingerless gloves because they're fun they're actually functional. <laughs> so, thank you. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Oscar. We'll, we'll we'll survive. It's just annoying. You know, I don't know if you guys saw the article, but uh, Ruth Chris Steakhouse, which you know we would oh, always they only got twenty million. The poor bastards. I, I heard fifty, but oh. you know that's like the kind of place for people in the salon industry that you take out your best employee for a promotion. And it's like, hey, you guys got all this money. I mean, imagine 50 million, how many salons they could have funded for the lousy 75 or 100 grand that will go back in and still spend the money. It's, it's I don't know. I don't, I don't know who runs what, but it's crazy. Right. Well, we knew all, we knew all the big corporations and the banks were going to keep the money. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that's a no brainer. It happened the last time during the bank bailout. They, they fucked everybody except themselves. So now, now, you know, Hopefully we'll get a second round of funding. Uh, keep my fingers crossed. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we will, but it's just really funny, right? That you have all these people that, you know, I went to the Wharton School, I went to Harvard. All, you know, if you want to be a politician, right? You're groomed from like the time you're 16. Like you're in the future business leaders of America in your school and you go to be a lawyer and you do this stuff. And, you know, you're, you're sort of in that mode, like you like that political science aspect of it, where for me, I graduated political science because it was the easiest way to get the hell out of college. Um, but, they, but, you know, they, they go in and, you know, they don't realize how that trickle down effect is, right? So having a third grader and a sixth grader and a seventh grader, they love those weird equations where if you pour the drink into glass one and glass two is higher than glass three, but the thing is where the money goes or where the drink goes, but you know, they don't realize that we sort of run the economy, right? So beauty, beauticians and people in the beauty industry, besides I'm gonna, spa, I'm gonna aggravate you even more. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> I got to tell you. I, I had to do that. Really, the 
Listen, if the MMA gets to come back, there's a good there's a good chance that I'm gonna fucking fight that guy in a ring. I, I'm just telling you. Every time I hear somebody on Facebook that's like, you know, I'm home and I'm watching Tiger King, and I'm like, I, you know, listen, Lion King was a beautiful play. Lion King was a beautiful movie. I didn't see the new version. This guy's an idiot, and you're wasting time instead of reading a book or watching. Listen, you could watch seven hours of this idiot, or you could watch seven hours of Jackie Young on the BBR, right? Like, I had to do this. I'm talking about you. you oh my watch. God. I knew that, Jackie, I knew this would get him fired up. That's well, I'm just saying, that's look at, listen, look at, look at, even if you go back the last seven hours of what we've done here between Gino and Jackie and Patty and Tina and all this stuff. It's like, you're going to waste your time watching. Yeah, ja yeah, Nancy said Jackie's cuter. <laughs> you know, going back to that whole Ruth's Chris thing, I'm, I'm pretty, like, you know, it would be one thing if it wasn't a publicly traded company, um, but it's a publicly traded company. I mean, it's bullshit. Like, oh. Justin Bieber's technically a small business based on what the SBA says and defines small business as. How's that one, James? Hey, listen, I'll, I'll fight Justin Bieber, too. I don't give a shit. I, I have a feeling I'm going to come out of this coronavirus thing, and I'm going to be so ornery and pissed off that there may be a chance that I'm going to be a – I'm going to make Voltron. I'm going to have all my stylists. Like, one's going to be one arm, one's going to be the other, and I'm just going to start punching my way through everything at this point. You don't know Voltron, right, Jackie? You're, you're like, you know, 29, so it's a little uh, – No, I know who – I'm 37, actually. Yeah, all right. <laughs> But if I said Max Hedrum, you probably would have been like, who the hell is that? Yeah, that I don't know, but. <laughs> Derek does Oscar. that. Oscar, is that the Statue of Liberty? No, it's the Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> Only Oscar. As a matter of fact, Oscar, I, I, you should Chicago, tell, you right? should, we should petition Derek to change the name of this group to Game of Thrones. That would be good. <laughs> hey, did you get my DM? Were you able to open that um, that link in Canva? Uh, let me see. Let me take a look. I don't know how it's raining and snowing at the same time right now. Oh my God, it was so cold today. I could, I was, I could not get warm. Hence, I, brought, I broke, broke these out again. Uh. And I, I, I do feel like every time I exit the house and go into, I was at, uh, I went to Target today and I went to the grocery store and I, it just feels like I've been an episode of Walking Dead. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, except there's no ammo or like. See a crown behind you. It's not a crown. <laughs> Get off your phone, use a computer like the rest of the world. Oh, it's, it's snowing and raining up there too in Niagara. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Today. It was oh. 38 here today. That That's cold for this time of year. It, it, uh, here it was like 20, 29, 28, something like oh, that. Screw that. I'm ready. I'm ready for some nice warm weather. Right? Me too. I went into the grocery store and they're selling basil plants and I'm like, not yet. <laughs> right. Now we might go to the drinking room now. Perfect place it, to be. I like that. Amy, what up? Yes, it is the end of the world as we know it, but that's not a bad thing. Should start with that song. If I had my Spotify app, I'd put it on for you. Can somebody like um, just mute Oscar? He's probably in shorts too. <laughs> <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> Hey, listen, man, I, I have to give it to Oscar. Every single morning, you know, with three kids at homeschooling and everything else, like, you know, of course, what do you turn on first? Facebook. And I'm looking at who threw up on the screen and posted some asinine comment. And Oscar's live, man. I turn it on and Oscar's ready to roll. He's got his bandana on and he's got his bricks out. And <laughs> Hey, Dina. I need his bricks to build an oven. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for a good Sopranos background today. So next time I get Gino on, I can put it on. <laughs> the boat? You need, you need one on the boat where they throw pussy like in the... That or the Bada Bing Club or something. Yeah. <laughs> 
Anthony's on. There's my friend. Hey, Anthony. Yeah, uh, James, I had I had a friend. Um, I gave her the link, and she said it. She was able to save it and open it just fine. Um, so then she shared the link back with me, and then I wasn't able to open it. So I, I saved the link. I went and put it as a PDF, and it's blank. See, there's something there's something corrupt with the file, and that's what I told Canva. So um, <clears throat> likely, I'll probably have to just uh, recreate all of the slides. Are, so. Jackie, are they pictures? like each screenshot um is what, what you do is there's a program called snag it that's what i oh, use yeah, you copy I, it. yeah that's, you, just, you can just square out square them all out and cut them cut them and save them i'll just i mean it's not that it's not the end of the world i can copy and paste most of the things over you know with two windows or whatever but um yeah my pdf saved just fine that's the funny part my pdf worked well it's the um, the actual PowerPoint that's not saving. So hopefully Canva can fix it because it was like two and a half hours of work. <laughs> but but you can still play it on your computer in Canva. Yeah, right? I can play it through Canva because you like you were able to upload the like or you were able to open the link and see the file, right? Yeah, I, mean, I could see the whole thing. Yeah. I would just call yeah. it. It looks really it looks really pretty. Go ahead, you guys. Nancy, um, that comment's great. Um, tonight, you're going to get a lot of digital stuff from Jackie. Jackie's awesome at um, social media posts. And this week, starting on Monday night, it's going to be um, your digital marketing reset week. So it's going to be all about uh, digital tools, stuff like that, all week long. We've got some great guests coming on, um, including Stacy Sobel, the editor for Salon today. So. What's going on, Andrew? Hey there. Hi, Andrew. Hi guys. Friday so night in New York is, City. Woo! Facebook's misbehaving again tonight, Andrew. Oh hey, my God. Andrew, I, I got to ask you a question. You know, sure. We've been on these calls and we've had people that have written books and, and things like that, and you have not once yet plugged your book on Amazon. Well, I mean, I. That's I mean, there's only 37 people in here. We got a little time, but I, I looked and I, and I, you, Gino, so Gino had emailed all of us and we were sort of just joking around back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then I saw an Andrew's signature in his email and I said, well, why aren't we plugging Andrew's book? I mean, you know. Well, well we're, we're into a new age. So I'm doing a new edition of this. <laughs> Are you, gonna Wait, are you doing the Bobby Brown new edition or are you doing the, the after Bobby Brown new edition? The after. <laughs> no offense, Bobby Brown. I, uh, listen, I'll, I'll kick Tiger King's ass. I just don't need Bobby Brown to show up to my house. That's a whole yes, different I, problem. Uh, Andrew, I, I, I did something special for James just to piss him off tonight. <laughs> What'd you do? You ready? Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. God. God. <laughs> well, I'm leaving that up the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Jackie, you're, look, you're looking good. Looks like the, you're taking care of those kids. Well, I'm hoping that every client that comes in when this is done, that their hair looks like his, because that that's a corrective. That's a, we're we're going to be making tons of dough if they come in like that. That's like uh, was, what was that movie? That's the tiger in the Bronx Zoo that that got COVID nineteen. Right, Jackie. You, Jackie, you should download some virtual backgrounds. Uh, I'll, I'll jump on that. <laughs> I like Jackie's background. I think it's. Or you got my, good. My background is called isolation. I have two children downstairs that are probably fighting over YouTube and what they get to watch on it. And I told them, I'm like, don't come up here and get me unless one of y'all die. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So today, today, my wife and I took a walk in the park because you got to, you know, do stuff. You got to get outside a little bit. And the park's really nice and we're doing our official because we, we've been told that you have to wear, you know, masks or bandanas or whatever. And we're walking around and there's a park and there's not a lot of people in Central Park and a parks department guy is working sawing down branches and all this stuff and the beautiful branches on the ground. And my wife said, do you think we can take some because they're blossoming? Beautiful. 
my wife said, you think we could take some of those home? I said, why not? She said, well, you people could stop us. No, don't worry about it. It's okay. You know, so I take these branches. I'm carrying this big bundle of beautiful green branches home. And we get out of the park and cross the street. And all of a sudden, this woman rushes up to us and said, you know, you can be arrested for taking that public property like that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, and so my wife turned to her. My wife is so great. She said, do you think we would actually destroy things? Actually, there's a public parks, uh, you know, worker who took this stuff. And you can get, I, I hope there's some left for you. It's on 79th Street. So if you just go down there and, and the woman said, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it, was like, it was like the Gestapo or something. You know, it's funny that you even mentioned that, Andrew, because you said that on, I don't know whose call it was, about not, um, it, may, it might have been Jay, about no judgment, right? right? So here you're in this time where people are locked up and everybody has their own issues that are going on. And she didn't have to run up to you and ask you that or tell, or scream at you. No. It was something kind of mild, right? And yeah. then, so now you have to go through this whole explanation of, hey, right. we're, we're cool, we're good. And it's like, oh, I'm really sorry I was an ass. I, you know. <laughs> It's like oh you put my your hand God. up and said social distancing, please. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a lot people. People are really, you know, oh, move yeah, to we'll start in five. Okay, sounds good. Like crazy. Oh my goodness. Well, and Andrew, Andrew's in the city, and, and I don't know how often you have to take public transportation in the city with everything being closed. But we have some friends and family and clients that still work, and and they have to, you know, they're essential workers that have to take public transit. And it's a disaster. So, oh. you know, after you had a bunch of people die, right? Clean the people scrubbing things. You had what was it, Andrew? It was like forty-one people died. Transit cleaning people. Well, that, yeah. 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 And now, you know, I'm always an advocate that I feel like if you are homeless, it's almost worse than being hungry. Like there's such there's such a sadness to that that they're living on these trains. There's nobody on them. That they're completely empty and I don't know. It's, there, there, there's such I, you know, I, I, I had an incident and it really was kind of broke my heart. I, we were walking, taking a walk, and there's no people on the street. You have to get this. Usually packed. Now there's no people. And there's a guy who has a bicycle and he has a couple of uh, plastic bags or whatever. And homeless guy. And he passes us and he says, if you have a dollar, I, I'd like a hot dog. And they hot dogs are being sold in certain places. And we walk ahead and then said, yeah, and we had to we put it in a bush or something, I can't remember, you know. And he comes past and took it and thanked us. And I thought in the moment, you know, gosh darn, folks like that, those guys are really suffering from all the social distancing. Those are the ones. Yeah. And he was cool. And then we, we walked down and then we're coming back the other way. And he asked another person and the other person kind of did the same thing. And then he passed us and he goes, hi, thank you so much. And it was really a touching, it was a touching New York city moment. It was great. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's happened a lot. I mean, we're yeah. listen, Bergen County where we are. Yeah. I, I have n I don't think I've ever seen anybody homeless here. I mean, I don't know if that's a good thing, bad thing, if it's a testament to what we have going on here. But I'm always one. First of all, I'm always for it, but I'm always the one that gets singled out, right? I'm the one that pulls out a $20 bill to buy something and, and I happen to get caught by like five. Like I always, I'm, I'm kind of out there. I always get stuck yeah. and I'm like, all right, I have no choice. But, you know, it's, it's a crappy existence, right, to be that way. Yeah. I don't think anybody wants to be homeless however you got there. And you're right, Andrew, you look at this time and you look at people that are sort of out on the street and who's help, like, I'm pissed off that I didn't get my PPP loan. Right. Approved. Who's helping them? Yeah. Not only the PPP, I logged on to the IRS one and they said, um, we have a problem processing yours. I'm like, what? what? I, I, got, <laughs> I got that too, yeah. Oh, okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one. I'm yeah, like, well, when I, when I start when I start having clients paying that three grand, right? <laughs> it, when I start having clients paying Bitcoin, so it can't be traceable, and I'm going to be like, 
I don't know. I don't, I don't know how they paid. I, you know, it's cryptocurrency is the only currency we take at the Beehive now. So you can stick it up your ass. I, I, it's just, it's really frustrating. It is. And unemployment, same thing. You're, 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 they didn't say I was denied. They said I was approved, but for a zero dollar amount. <laughs> Why even say it, right? Right. You owe us. You owe us, man. <laughs> Come to think of it. You forgot exactly. to pay in. Whoops. Anyway. Yeah, but I will okay. tell you, though, that Derek, um, you know, listen, we're all sort of local. And even Andrew, you're, you're a stone's throw away from where you are in Jersey. Yeah. And we're all friendly with Christine Zelensky, who had done one of the classes. And Christine and I have been friends for a long time, like Derek hey, has been friends. Um, she had talked to one of our senators in New Jersey about starting a group of not just hair people, but other businesses that have an issue with social distancing and when we think we can be open. And the person she talked to was really open to it. So I contacted our senator in Bergen County and I said, you know, we have the power, right? I mean, people in the hair business, we touch a lot of lives that, you know, we're seeing more and more now that they really need us. Well, we don't even have to be a loud voice. We could just be a, a, a voice that's giving them something of reason. So for you guys that aren't in our area, you know, don't be shy to reach out to your congressman, your senator, your speakers, whatever they are, because they you, you're electing them. And if you can't be in the business because that, you know, six foot of distance, what happens when it's six inches of distance? You know, I don't care how many masks you wear or what kind of shield you wear or how much armor or whatever it is, you know, we may be the last to go back to work. So if we have to stay out longer to be safe for us, then they need to know that, that we should, we should be even more of a voice. Hey, hey, hold up one second. Oscar, is it live on Facebook now? I don't think it is. I mean, it says it's not working on my side, so. Uh, I'm, I'm in Facebook now. I'm trying to check it out. It's not yeah, no, no, it's not live on Facebook. Facebook Live is down, guys. It's not connecting to Zoom tonight. So Where's Mark we are, when you need we are all inside of Zoom tonight. Jackie, you ready to rock it? I am ready. Go for it, girl. Okay. Oh, it, hey, is everybody, that, mute your mics we except start, Jack. We just start jumping in now? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll kick it off. Okay. So welcome tonight to the Beauty Business Reset. I think we are on episode 19 or 20. Tonight we have the pleasure of having Jackie Young on. Jackie's going to talk to us about some digital marketing techniques that she uses. Um, especially with regard to social media. And I've been following Jackie's stuff for a long time and she just rocks it. So with that, it's all yours, Jackie. Okay. Hi guys. Um, it's, uh, it's super exciting to be back today. I had um, a little bit of like technical difficulties with my slide, my presentation. So I'm going to be sharing it directly from Canva. Um, but I, it's going to be a lot of information tonight about um, connecting on social media. It's going to be like a heavy kind of, uh, there's going to be an overtone of branding and uh, just basically start to finish how to kind of engage your clients and your, uh, like what I would like to call them as fans on Facebook. Uh, so with that, I'm just going to, I'm going to screen share here and maybe. Sorry, I'm like super slow at this, guys. Okay. Now, see, I have no idea what that looks like. <laughs> but, uh, all right. So here we go. We get to share it from here. So here we are. So here's my academy again, Chic Geek Academy. I'm Jackie Young. I have put together this presentation for you guys really about it's really about being connected in a virtual world and virtually that's the only way we connect we can connect right now and to be completely honest I don't think that it's a temporary norm I think it's the new norm and I think it's something that we should embrace and moving forward I think this is actually going to be something that um, is, is going to be a game changer for businesses that do uh, what we what we do service industry 
So first thing is first, again, I want to thank you guys for being here because if you are here, you are a leader in this industry. You are definitely what this industry needs. So for you to take time out of your day to watch this live or um, to f watch the replay or whatever it is, there's a big, huge thank you from my heart to yours for this because it is pertinent that we have people like you in this industry. And remember again that this, I don't know how many of you guys, you know, put it in the comments. Um, I am really embracing this pause. And I think honestly, it's been one of the best things that could have happened to me for my thoughts around what it is that I want for myself and what it is that I want for my business. And I hope that it has been the same for you guys as well. So my name is Jackie Young. I have been a salon owner for seven years and a hairdresser for 20. Um, I, she Geek is my brainchild. It started out as, it, it, this logo I actually drew um, by hand and I walked around with it on a, on a napkin in my wallet for close to 18 months before I had the gumption to actually send it to my graphic designer to put it into this. And it really kind of stemmed from the idea that I have had so many in seven years as a salon owner i have had so many trials and tribulations from just how i wanted to grow my business and how i wanted to help the stylists and it's how i still wanted to help the clients and the shiki academy was born out of that it's it's really about helping you to get to where i am way faster so if i if I can help you with something that I've been through and you shave 18 months off of your, your torment and torture, that's what I'm here for. Reach out, send a message, join my Facebook group. I would love, you know, to have you guys there. Okay. So tonight's topic is virtually connected. So it's a guide to educate, inspire, and entertain your fans. And I say fans because really at the end of the day, we, we create fans. Our client, like clients is so stuffy to me. Like I use it in the salon because that's what they are. But really, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but as an owner and somebody who's done hair for 20 years, some of those clients that sit in my chair have been there for 20 years. Maybe they'll be there another 20 years if I continue to do hair behind the chair. Maybe not, but I can't tell you how much um, pride they have had for me throughout my journey. And to me, that's not just a client. To me, that's a fan. That's a different type of connection. And it's something that I really revere. And it's super important to me that I remember not only do I serve them as clients, like that's the professional side of it, but you know, they are way more than that. So topics tonight to cover are building trust virtually creating content for social media, a bunch of tips and tricks that I use, um, especially because like creating content can be overwhelming. So if you guys find creating content on social media overwhelming, if you don't know what uh, sometimes to talk about or what to do on a live, put a one in the comments. I'm super interested to find out. And if you're not, I want to find like, if you're not overwhelmed and you have a strategy, just give like a brief description. I would love to hear it and bring it up for topic for conversation. And I think my children are going to walk in. <laughs> so if I get interrupt, interrupted by a tiny human, I'm sorry, I will introduce them. They're cute, I promise. So the other thing is, what do clients want to see on social media? How do we connect in Messenger? Yes, you can have some go. Bye. I was going to split them up with you and Jasper. Just split them with Jasper. Close the door. Bye. I'll split Love you. Bye. Okay. They want my gum. Okay. Uh, connecting in Messenger. Sorry about that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, scripting for your brand. And then really how to begin and where the hustle starts. So did we get any ones in there? Are people overwhelmed with creating content on social media? Yes. Okay. Um, not that that's good, <laughs> but you're in the right place. So I'm going to give you I think, I think anybody responded were all ones. Okay. <laughs> So I, you know, I struggled with it too. And I think that that's where I can really help you is that like a lot of these presentations that I plan on doing in my group or, you know, with Derek and everything like that, which by the way, thank you, Derek, so much for the opportunity to do this. Cause this really, this is giving back like an industry, this industry has given me so much. And I feel like all I can do, all I have left to do is just give back, you know? Um, but I struggled so much with this stuff. So I feel like I was, I mean, I comb the internet and I have taken class after class after class and I'm still in marketing classes right now. Uh, it, my learning never stops. So if I can help you guys with something like this is one of those things, cause this I struggled with, right? 
Okay. Oops. So, okay. So I just want to start by like defining things. I like having a definition for things just because that's I'm quirky and geeky and nerdy like that. So virtual connection, and this is my definition for it right now. It's the only way to connect right now. Amid COVID, legally and literally, it's a digital dialogue to maintain a relationship with your fans. And I think that, um, you know, like I said, I don't think that this is just the temporary norm. I think that you guys are going to find if you really embrace this virtual connection, you can hone it and you can own it and you can really utilize it to build your book and your business. And I will tell you right now that probably 80% of our clients book through Facebook Messenger. They don't even call the shop. And I'm totally fine with that because I would rather have a text message sent to the shop than answering the phones and tying up my coordinator. It's very simple appointments. Just it's, it, I love it. So why is the virtual connection important? So it builds trust. It establishes you as the expert in your industry. And I, and I speak to that as whether you're a hairdresser, whether you are a, a spa owner and you're an esthetician or a manicurist or you know, whatever it is that you do, it sets you as the expert, it keeps you connected, and it creates an intimate environment with your true tribe. And I think, and I don't know if you guys agree with this, but I do feel like because text messaging is just literally one on one, it's me with a screen, it feels a little bit more intimate to me, like I feel like there's, um, <clears throat> there's kind of like a space for trust a little bit more um, than on the phone or not necessarily that it replaces being in person, but it's almost like being in the head in your head, I guess, with somebody. Hey, Jackie, not, not to interrupt you on, you're on a roll and it's been super topical about obviously with COVID and people keeping in touch with clients and obviously most of the educators and people like us are all on Zoom. Um, is there a way, you know, it gets a little bit confusing sometimes where and I'm not plugging Salon Ninja by any stretch of the means, but that's been my saving grace yeah, um, because like, I'm able to keep it all in one dashboard. But yeah. we still do, even with that, have clients that leave a voicemail at the salon or sure. send a Facebook messenger. So we're, we're been spending the last five weeks trying to reel them into one space to make it easier just to keep it easy for us to communicate. But do you have a way, have your stylists that you worked with, have they talked to clients um, on uh, some video chat or anything like that? Do you have any suggestions? Well, so actually, I'm a huge fan of Facebook groups. So to answer your question on this, I think a Facebook group, now not everybody in your database is going to be in a Facebook group, but um, I've had better luck with my group than I have had with um, like my Facebook page, the business page itself. Um, and connecting there, doing videos there, yes. I, I can't say video chat. I've had clients just call me. Um, they've called the shop and I have all the calls forwarded. Um, but I check in with emails and stuff. It's kind of however they want to, um, however they want to check in. I'm getting ready. On Monday, I'll be in there making some phone calls too, probably starting at like, I don't know, 1130 or 12. And I'll just be phoning everybody uh, but I think the group is honestly one of the better ways to do the videos because you can do a live in your Facebook group and it, it'll stay there. You'll, you know who sees it and you can see people interact with it. And then you can do a watch party again if it like, I don't know, like say you were wanting to connect with your clients on, I don't know why a product company would do this right now, but maybe they have a, a, a new product. Um, and you want to explain what it is to them. You do a Facebook live and you, you know, get do the features and benefits. Maybe you hand out samples or whatever. You do like a virtual hair therapy party or something like that. And, you know, it's just a, a fun way to stay connected and be present, I guess. Did that answer your question? No, it did. And, and the only reason I'm asking too is obviously with Facebook Live not working, I'm posting in Zoom over and over again the code to get in. Yeah. But James, I, I could jump in here too because I got an important question for Jackie. Jackie, now that Facebook changed their rules with Messenger uh, last week, I think it was, or maybe two weeks ago, that you can only reach out to people to market to people that you've talked to within 24 hours, kind of the bots are dead. So are you using Facebook as just kind of a personal one-on-one -on -one talking back and forth? Yes. So I was, I actually am going to touch on bots just a tiny bit. Um, I, it's mentioned in one of the slides. I don't care for the bots um, except for general information such as like address, hours of operation, phone number. Um, there, you cannot fake uh, human interaction and we're a relationable business. So I think a bot is 
uh, it has its value and it has its place 100%, but until it is intelligent and AI picks up and it can, you know, link up with my system and book an appointment, I'm not interested in it. So, well, yeah. Honestly, Jackie, they're, they're, that's pretty much dead because with the new Facebook rule, they're, they pretty much killed the bot business. All, right. all overnight. So if you're thinking about bots, forget about it. The new no. the new trend is going to be bots through text messaging, mm -hmm. where yeah. it actually thinks it's in our, but I'm not bragging, our platform already has it built in. If when Jackie learns how to do it, but honestly, they, Facebook, is dead. Up, Facebook, it. Facebook Messenger is dead unless you're using it as an actual communication platform. Yeah, but yeah. Um, some, and there's the, the reason uh, I get it that some, somebody posted, can I schedule out Facebook um, Messenger things with Boris? No, you cannot anymore. Um, scheduling and doing a lot of things on Facebook Messenger that we did is just gone. Use yeah. it as a personal connection tool, like Jackie said. Yeah. We've got to be personal in our, in our talks. That's what builds trust. Well, and you know, speaking to this too, like to answer your question, yes, I do reach out. I actually go, we probably have over 800 messages in Facebook that we have gotten people to comment on ads, adverts that we've run um, and we message them and I will scroll down and it's a job that every stylist has in the salon on their downtime. They scroll all the way down to the very, very end of the list and they check in with each individual client. The rule is no later than six weeks. And I'll tell you, because we've checked in on clients that have never even been into the salon with us, like, you know, it's, um, it, that is touching for a lot of people. Not only, and you have so much information in that message area and Facebook has made it so you can actually tag your, your posts, you can filter, or sorry, tag your messages. You can filter it a certain way. You can make notes. You can see which ads you, I mean, you can mark them as basically, cold hot and you know cold warm and hot leads basically so it's super helpful if you are managing your business in that capacity however one caveat i will say is facebook messenger went down for me and i lost all my messages one time so get contact information if you're going to do that hey jackie and not to throw a, an oscar brick at you sorry oscar i'm most i'm busted oscar because he's hot and oscar listen thanks for being on every night we appreciate it but you know your so your system that you've had it, and, and I love your system and you and I have talked offline about even your last call, which everybody go back to the YouTube, sign up, subscribe, salon ops, check out Jackie's first call. She's got some killer ideas, especially when we reopen about packaging services together. So it's a little easier for clients to digest. Um, but in terms of the timing and in terms of messenger and, and having so much access with these clients, when we get back into the salon, and we have to stretch schedules, right? So the staff may be split shifted. The owners are gonna have this onus on top of them. You may not get a cleaning service that could come in every night. So owners are gonna have to figure out creative ways. You know, I called, I don't know if I said that last night, I called the company that does a robot that does a UV cleaning that they use in hospitals and they're, they're pretty cheap. They're only $100,000. So if I get my PPP loan, maybe I'll, I'll spend 75,000 on it. Um, but you know, you, you're going to have so much more in the way of the sanitation side and, you know, making sure your staff and everything's comfortable at some point, what do you tell clients? Hey, listen, you know what? At seven o'clock at night, we're closed. Stop messaging me. Like wh wh when is the AI going to come in and say, Hey, by the way, you've called and we're closed. So oh, hey. shut up and we'll, we'll talk in the morning. You know, I mean, I think here's the reality of it. Reality of it is I don't know about you, but like I have a do not disturb on my phone. And I activate it on a regular basis. And I have always like, you know, what's funny to me is the first thing clients will say is, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't see this. Cause I'll message if I've got time and my kids are going to bed, I'll respond to some Facebook messages. Why not? And they'll, they'll say in the morning, I'll get a message at like 5.00 AM. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't see it. I'm like, Hey, it's, it's text messaging. It's not necessarily real time unless it's real time that we're texting in. And it is really at your leisure, which is what I think, it's a, it's a convenience thing, right? So it's, um, if you don't want to answer calls after seven, turn your bot on to say, hey, we'll be back with you tomorrow after 10. Feel free to type in whatever you want, message us, send us pictures, whatever. Um, but we'll get back to you at 10. You know, it's, it's all about communication. And, you know, it's funny because there's a, one thing in here is I have uh, say what you mean and mean what you say. 
it's all about like part of the building trust thing. So yeah, anyway, it's, that's a great question, but I think it really comes down to it's what do you want to work? And I hear this all the time and you know, um, gosh, I've seen so many ticked off stylists, uh, complaining about how clients are just reaching out to them at all hours of the day. And I'm just like, well, uh, I don't know if you should be mad about that uh, or if you should just like maybe use do not disturb and be grateful that you've got clients reaching out to you. So I think it's just, it, we have the luxury of creating our schedules in the salon. So create your schedules around this. Jackie, I think it's Jackie. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, such an important point because we have to conserve our energy. And that's really what it's about. And protect ourselves, not from the clients, but from the forces that be. And we have to set the boundaries for the clients as to what we will do and what we won't do. And clients respect that. They do, and they will. They will. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. And, you know, and I have always made it kind of like an open, it's, it's an open text policy. You call the salon, text the salon, whatever. Um, I do not answer some of my clients have my per, some of my my clients have my cell um, for some reasons or another. Uh, I just don't respond to them until the morning during work hours. But if I'm responding to Facebook messages, I just it's kind of, for me. It's when I am able to. They know I have kids. They know I'm a single mom. You know they know these things about me. And I, you know I'm going to get into this too. If they know this about you they'll respect that as well. And I think it really, it just comes down here. It's like, let's just jump into this because these are all coming up in this, in this PowerPoint, I promise. <laughs> so, um, ways to build trust. So, you know, going, this is a perfect segue into this. So connecting on Messenger through text can create a more intimate and safe space for your clients. And, you know, when I say safe space, I mean too, like they can actually have the moment to complain about a previous hair service that they had whether it be in your salon or it was at another salon, it's a lot safer than saying it out loud. Um, it is safe for them to send pictures of their hair without coming into the salon for an at-home botch job that they've done. And I'll tell you, they send it. If you make that space safe, they send it, they trust you. Um, and it's just, it, it's paramount. It really is to build that trust. And through Messenger, through social media, you get to portray yourself. Here it is again. You get to portray, portray yourself as a human. And so many times, like, you know, if you don't want to type it in, type, type one in the chat, because I'm curious to know how many of you guys are actually hiding behind your business and not actually putting your face out there, you know, and if you're, and I'm just going to use the name of this salon, I know there's probably a couple, but like if your salon is like rock, paper, scissors, and your name is Jessica, is, is your salon page posting all about what we, 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 and rock, paper, scissors do, or is it what Jessica does as the business owner, as the brand, as the face of the company? Because people buy from people. They just do. Um, it's just one way to build trust is like people, people lot like, you know, if you're afraid to do a Facebook live because you're going to get all stuffed up or, you know, screw up what you're saying. And I can't tell you how many times I've been on Facebook lives and I've said something backwards or just like completely spaced out for like 30 seconds. People like that because they like to know that you do it too. <laughs> so it's just one of those ways that you get to connect and just be human, right? But, you know, other ways to build trust too through it is to portray yourself also as an expert in your field. You know, it's if you are a skincare specialist, uh, are you doing posts that are educating your, your clientele about why it is that there's upward strokes or maybe muscles in the face, maybe specific types of uh, layering. I don't, I don't know. I'm not an esthetician. I'm just making stuff up here. But <laughs> like, are you positioning yourself as the expert in your industry? because this is a great place to do it and it builds trust. I mean, I hate to say it, but like people think that everything that come out, comes out of Dr. Oz's mouth is truth. And it's just how he, it's just how he does. He's educating and he's doing everything that he can to make his followers, his fans feel their best self, right? So- Jackie, how, Jackie, how important is doing what we're doing right now? Putting yourself in front of a camera. I, I'll be honest with you. The first time I can speak to audiences, right? It's uh -huh. really easy to speak to an audience of live people. Speaking to a computer screen or a phone 
and yeah. coming across as you, it, it, it's really hard. That's why I always tell all my coaching clients, I always say, first thing I want you to do is post, post a Facebook live of yourself, introducing yeah. yourself. Yeah. Guys, it, Jackie, you could speak to it, but you need to learn how to do that. So it's a true story. This morning, I was going over my slides because I was trying to put them in an order that just felt more fluid to me. And, you know, I was talking to Derek after my last presentation and I had had a couple of out of body moments like, Jiminy Christmas, I'm talking to a computer screen. And I'm like, I felt like I could see myself talking to this. But this morning, I kid you not, I literally did my entire presentation and was just kind of like going over the slides to see if it like felt fluid to me. And I wasn't talking to anybody then. I didn't have the camera going, <laughs> but it gets easier, right? Like the more you do something, the easier it gets. And this is, it's so important. It is so important because you are the face of your company. You really are. It doesn't matter what you sell. You could be a salon, you could be a plumber, you could be an IT guy, it doesn't matter. People, you know, people are going to buy from people. And I, I can tell you, um, I, I love buying li from little boutiques because I know the owners and it's just, uh, I would rather buy from them than uh, even on Poshmark guys, like on Poshmark, their profiles are there and they talk about things on Poshmark. Like you are literally buying from a person. Um, and it's, it feels better than buying from a big box retailer. So uh, it's just get out there. It's so important being in front of the camera. Everybody looks the same. I promise you. <laughs> I promise you. Some of us have better cameras. Some of us just use our Max webcam, right? But um, so yeah. So moving on here. So use emojis. Show personality in that way. I I can't even emphasize this more. Uh, every post you have should probably have an emoji in it. Um, there is no font for sarcasm. I don't think they plan on launching one anytime soon. And I think that the best way that you can show your personality is through using emojis. Sometimes, sometimes when we're telling a client, no, it sounds really harsh. So if you put in some emojis to soften the blow of like, I'm sorry, we can't take your black box hair color for 10 years to platinum blonde in one session for 99.99 um that's not part of the i want to be blonde special <laughs> like it's you know putting some emojis in there and just letting them know that it's like you really feel for them that they can't have the hair that they want um but it's just it, it is an excellent use to show your personality now i have even i've gone as far as to just play with these guys like before messenger and facebook had a uh they, they do it now. They, they let you know who's signed in and who's actually responding to clients so you can see sent by. Um, but they didn't before. So we had dedicated specific emojis to certain stylists. So I knew who was responding when I went back through to monitor the text message threads to make sure things were being said in company script. Um, so I knew who I needed to have a conversation with if a conversation was needed to have. So um, so that was just one kind of clever way, but we use the geeky emoji all the time. My desk girl uses the one with the, the uh, sunglasses because she's it, it just fits her. Like if she were an emoji, that would be it. <laughs> like, they have one that has a mask on now too, just in case you didn't see that. I did not see that. Oh my goodness. Well, there you go. So <clears throat> you can add that one into a scripted message that you send out to your clients soon. So, and you know, the other, the other way that builds trust is just conveying a consistent message, maintaining a steady presence and caring about your clients. So that's, I mean, these are all ways to build, to build trust and you can do all of these through social media. Excuse me. All right, next slide. All right, <clears throat> so here, we're gonna jump right into it. So designing your social content. So here's just kind of three talking points really to kind of consider. You know, here again, be your brand, get personal, share your why. If you guys haven't read the book, um, find your why, isn't it find your why, Simon Sinek? Is that it? Find your why? Excellent book. Um, you definitely need to be sharing this on your social media platform. It's part of your, your company's mission. You know, it's, it's part of your company's mission for the clients and vision for the staff. And it's super important, you know, and here, if it makes you laugh, they'll laugh. Be your brand, be you. Post what makes you happy, inspired, and things that you find interesting because those are the same things that your clients are going to find interesting. Um, so it's really just going back to being a brand. And if you don't have a brand, get one. And, you know, I can point this out too, is that if you look through all my slides, they're all the same colors. 
They're all the same fonts. Everything is, it's all in brand. So be consistent. That's, I mean, that's one thing you want your brand to be recognizable. Like there's, uh, I've had clients that have said, Oh, that's, I, I, I didn't even have to look and see who posted that on social media. I knew it was yours right away. Just because like, I recognized how it was written, like, and I recognized what was written, you know, like when I read it, I didn't even have to look to see who it was. I just knew it was your salon. So be a brand, be recognizable. Um, everybody knows what Target is. Everybody knows what Walmart is. They have a brand. Look at it, figure, they even have specific clients, right? They have a client avatar. And we'll talk about that a little bit too. So next talking point is really kind of three topics in one. So it's inspire, entertain, um, I, yeah, inspire, entertain, and educate. All of these are things that you need to be posting for uh, engagement on social media. And I, it seems a little crazy when you think like, oh, it's just, I always used to think of it as like just this feed where it was like a news feed. And I took it so literally, like it's just when we posted available appointments, uh, somebody new came to the salon and it's just like, it's boring. That's so boring. <laughs> nobody wants to just, nobody goes on social media. What do you, do you guys go on social media to find out that stuff? I don't, I go on there to to, to see what somebody's saying or, you know, watch the comments and eat popcorn. Like I'm going on there for like entertainment and your clients are too. So be entertaining to them so that you're in the forefront and right there in front of their face. So all your content should fall into these categories. If it inspires you again, put it on there. If you guys are into Bible quotes and your clients are, they're going to like that. You know, I'm into spirituality and my quotes that go onto our Facebook page are usually very spiritual in nature. Um, our entertaining posts happen to be memes that say fuck a lot. <laughs> like it just is what it is. They're usually the ones that get like 30 plus likes, <laughs> go figure. Um, and you know, when we educate, it's, it's usually, this one I do struggle with a little bit more because I feel like it's more about tutorials and you know, things like that. Um, but ed educating them on just things that they should be doing, proper way to take off or fix a nail if it's broken. Um, how to do beach waves or uh, just a proper use of a product or just any kind of thing that you can think of that you, you know, stuff that seems like normal and just kind of taken for granted as a hairdresser is like golden nuggets for your clients. Like, you know, layering a dry shampoo over top of a pomade for extra volume. That's the kind of stuff our clients are like, oh my God, I didn't even know that you could do that. Who would put a pomade at your root? Like oil at the root, what? So educating them with all of these little tidbits of information that you guys have that's all hip pocket, but not common knowledge for what I like, I like to call them civilians, <laughs> or our civilian clients, fans. So it's, um, you know, just, it's really important that these are the three things that are, that are going on. And I would say, if, you, if you're a Gary Vaynerchuk fan, he'll tell you nine of these before you even ask for a sale. So even if you're educating, don't plug the sale, just educate. It's all about giving value to your clients. The value that you give your clients is the connection. It's posting something that inspired you because you saw it on your Facebook feed or something that made you crack up out loud. Like I might screenshot Derek with that background and like <laughs> post it in my mastermind group later because it's hilarious. But you want to just make sure that it's what can, the question you should be asking yourself is, how can I inspire? How can I entertain? How can I um, educate my clients today? Because once you do all these things, you have become very important to them and the sales will follow. So planning your content. This one is, uh, this one is probably the, the one that it took me the longest to figure out. And it's, um, you just pull out a calendar and you, you theme your week or your month. And then you decide how many days, how many times you want to post in a week and what your posts are going to be. Are they going to be inspirational, educational, entertaining? Like, you know, are they going to be funny? Are you going to ask for a sale of some sort? Did you put together some fancy offer, a flash sale, whatever? Plan it and then just schedule them because that's the nice thing about it is you can schedule on Facebook. So <laughs> personal posts or not. Nah. Here's the thing. I, this goes back really. It's so key to being your brand. I say, do it, be vulnerable, be bump, blah, blah, right. There's that stuff up, right. Be vulnerable, be relatable and be authentic. Like clients absolutely love 
when you can not even clients, people just love when you can be authentic and relatable. It's, you know, um, it, it's some of the reasons we love biographies so much, right? Like if you guys have ever read Sophia Maruzzo's, uh, uh, oh gosh, what's the name? I can't, Boss Babe I, or something. Is it Boss? I can't think of the name of her book right now, but she was very relatable in the beginning, talking about how she didn't have insurance and she had to have shit jobs in order to get, and I'm like, oh my God, I can totally relate to this chick. And here she is running, uh, you know, she was, she was literally doubling and tripling her business within years. And I'm like, this is, I, I just was so connected to the storyline, but you know, I wouldn't have been if she hadn't been vulnerable in those moments. So I say, if you're, a, if you're a single parent with three kids and you're trying to run this salon, share that story. You don't have to share all the details. You just share who you are and why you're doing it. You know, I, I, you know, I support public schools in my area. My kids go to public schools. My clients all know that. They love it. And they're all active in the community. They think that supporting public schools is great. And if you don't, sorry. But, you know, it's just, it's a relatable thing. It's being authentic. It's just sharing those personal things, you know. Um, it, it is key to building your brand. It, it's, it's pertinent for loyalty and trust because you, you cannot connect with another human being without being vulnerable on some level. You just can't. And people will love you for it. They really will. They'll, they'll think your quirks and your personality traits are cute and charming and people buy from people that they like and trust. It's just, that's, it's just what's so. All right, so inspire, entertain, and educate. So this is just gonna kind of dig a little bit more in depth about, it. It, it's in here twice because it's really that important. So clients that become fans are inspired and touched by the same things that you are. They really are. If it moves you, post it. If your client, your clients are literally past versions of yourself. If you think about it, I mean, you guys put a, you know, Put a one in the comments if you have clients that you recognize versions of yourself in. Almost every single one of my clients is a, a version of me in some capacity, either the way that I was, the way that I am, or the way that I want to be. And it's really important that you recognize that because they are your tribe. They are your ideal clients. And it goes back, I said this before, all money is not good money. There are 7.6. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's the law of attraction. A hundred you know, every stylist attracts similar personalities to their yep. chair, right? It's so true. It's so funny. You can look through a salon, look at the clients for every stylist and it's the law of attraction. It yep. really is. It really, it, it really is. And it's part of like that whole fake it till you make it thing. It's like the fake it till you make it part comes with identifying who you want in your chair, being that person and attracting that. That's where that, that's just my, my, idea of how that works especially when you just really don't know shit when you're that young in the industry like it's just you fake it till you make it is dress the part so that you can have the clients that you want so that you can you know really kind of it's it, it's the be do have thing right like if you can't be it right now try to do it and have it so that the being part comes it's just it's cyclical yeah it's yeah i'm, I'm way spiritual we could go on and on about this whole thing <laughs> so, um so here's the thing. So it's like, so I put this in here, like if you laugh, they laugh just like that. And it just reminded me a song from when I was in high school that might, yeah, anyway, but it's laughter connects us all. So if there's something that is making you laugh, your clients a hundred percent are going to laugh too. Like I, I absolutely love um, dad jokes and the punnier and more awful they are, the better. And my clients know it. They'll literally send me some in Facebook messenger. They will email me them on occasion. Uh, <laughs> Just, I have literally laughed so hard. I've almost cried with some of my clients sharing memes that are just like, I think they're hilarious. They, I don't know if they think it's funny or that I'm laughing at it, or it's just funny in general, but it doesn't matter. We're laughing. And you know, it, it's just, it goes back to the law of attraction. Like-minded clients are the best. They, they really are. So people who are inspired by the same things that you are like this, like to laugh at the same things you do, that's going to almost guarantee like a pretty fluid, uh, exchange of all things in the chair from energy to money to all of it. Um, you know, and then the educate education part, teach your clients what they need to know to look and feel their best. And, you know, I don't even mean just the hair part. Like I, I can, I can tell you that 
Oh, I was much better at posting them in the very beginning, but I got quite busy with a lot of other things in my own personal life. Um, but posting recipes and posting cooking videos or just posting just things about what we were doing in the very beginning of quarantine, like people were, or whatever, lockdown, lock in, shut in, whatever. <laughs> um, they were sharing a lot of what they were doing. And it's, you know, some, some of your clients might not know how to cook and you might be an excellent cook and they might want some of your recipes. And that's an educational post that is feeding right into your like-minded clientele. And it's, you know, some people would think I'm crazy for going and posting on my social media, a, a recipe or putting a recipe into my newsletter, but clients like it. They really do. They are just like us, except they can't do hair. <laughs> or their own skin and nails. Okay. So here, let's touch on being the expert. So this is the question I want you guys to have in the back of your head is what free value can you give your fan base? And before you like balk at that and get your panties in a bunch, I want you to think about all the educators for the last 20 some days that have given their time, you know, spending uh, hours putting together slides that can't be, <laughs> They can't actually be saved on their computer and not to mention their time, you know, maybe away from their family during dinner time. But, you know, they have, they have all been here for you giving free content, free value for you to help you. So how can you turn around and take that and pay it forward to your clients? That's the question. What free value can you give them? And there is so much that you can do. It doesn't have to be a service. It doesn't have to be a discount. It's, it, you know, it, we have to get out of this mentality. It's like, you know, this is, this is a new world. Um, and it's, it goes into the video tutorials. Like I actually saw a girl um, do a, a Facebook uh, she posted it on Facebook and it was a quick little bang trim. And I absolutely loved it because I'll tell you, I have fixed some really bad bang trims, but she showed how to separate the hair so that you were only cutting where you needed to do it and pulling it down very slow. And whether you agree or don't agree, the reality is, is they're pulling out scissors and sometimes they're manicure scissors and sometimes they're kitchen scissors, but they're going to cut those bangs and you can either help them or you can just be stingy with your knowledge and hoard it all in. And let's just say law of attraction doesn't like that. Uh, what free value can you give them? Can you, can you give them tips and tricks on how to wear their hair? Or uh, do you have an extra conditioner hanging around that you can sell for three or five dollars in a jello shot cup and give them something that can help them moisturize their hair and then do Facebook live around it when it's working. <laughs> So it's what free, what free value can you give your fan base? And if you guys have ideas, put them in the comments because I would love to hear what you guys think. I, you know, when I think of free value for clients and value that clients like on Facebook, I think making them laugh, connecting with them in general. Um, it doesn't always have to be hair related. It could be, oh gosh, um, we're super big on coffee. Maybe there's like a new coffee creamer or something, or I, you know, uh, a flavor of tea that our clients we think will love. It could be just like, hey, it could be a screen, a, a picture from the tea aisle at your local grocery store, tagging a client who you know is always drink. Like, look what I found. You know, th that's valuable for your clients, I think. And it's it's just a different way of thinking about it. It's it is you being on top of your game, right? So does anybody comment on anything, guys? Yeah, a lot. Jackie, one of the things that I've got through this is that there's so many stylists that are saying, don't do this, don't do that. You're teaching them how to do their hair. Give it a rest, guys. Yeah. You're building client loyalty by helping your clients. They yeah. need just as much attention right now in this effed up world as you need, right? So, so you want to set yourself as, as a wall in front of you and your clients, that's fine. Guess what? That client's probably going to find somewhere else to go because you're not being real. You're not being genuine. And that's exactly what Jackie's teaching you. Be real, be personable, and be true to yourself and your client. So I will tell you that <laughs> I don't remember the last time I did my hair myself. Um, I've cut my bangs. I have uh, done my own color, but I think I, the last time I did my own color was the day before my job interview for my first salon job. And I had to do my own base color last week. And I was swearing like a sailor 
my arms were tired and I had to hang my head over that stupid friggin shampoo bowl. Okay. To shampoo my hair. And I, I kid you not in the middle of my damn shampoo, someone's knocking on my salon door. <laughs> so I, go, I was so over it. And I like, I had clients like we, we have grab and go glazes for our clients and we're tinting our conditioners and our shampoos for them to, uh, to take home and do that. And I, I told this, this client, I was like, I don't even want to give you enough for your whole head because it's just a pain in the ass to do it yourself. Like, and I'm a hairdresser. I was like, I'm trying to figure out like in the mirror, I'm like, screw this. Like it's not, it is not. Right. Poor, poor, poor Andrew and I are stuck at home with the wives. Andrew's coloring single processes. I'm putting extensions in and single processes. <laughs> I'm like, Christ, the salons need to open already. Yeah, you all want to take on a, like a, you know, for those of you that are thinking that it's just like so awful that we're promoting, that anybody would promote them to do your hair, I just challenge you to do your own and you will see that they will be right back in your chair <laughs> as soon as your doors open, like probably with a Starbucks in hand because it's just awful to do your own hair and it's so awful. So anyway. It's just being the expert really is about just helping people. And, you know, it, it is always, it, it's not just about the hair guys. It, it never has been, it never will be. And it's that, it's Pareto's principle, 80-20. It's 80% of connection and 20% of what you do. And you do not have to be the best stylist on the planet to, to have a busy book and make great money. You just have to, you have to care you know, you really do. And it's what, what, what value can you give to your clients on social media that is going to help them feel their best? Sometimes it might just be a laugh. Sometimes it might be one of those, you know, uh, I, like I love that Facebook post that's going around with all the different colored hearts that says, tell me how you're doing right now. Um, and I'll, you know, whatever, like the black heart is like miserable, can't handle it. Like, and people are DMing you know, people over this. Cause it is like it, it, you know, that might just be the value that you give your client in that moment. It's, it's the connection. So. Hey, hey, you know what, Jackie, I just want to hold you for one second. You talked a lot about contacting your clients and um, you know, social media wise and everything else, but in a time like this, where most salons, where, you know, we're in New Jersey, we're coming on five weeks being closed uh, we've been doing emails. We sort of broke out our weeks because I'm the techie and don't do hair. So I'm super anal about how client management is. And we had a few staff meetings and I talked to my wife today and there were a few clients that are like super regulars that did not read the email, that did not respond to the text that, you know, we were concerned that we went back and said, wow, you know, they're pretty, they adopt whatever creative stuff we do, whatever charity we have, they're in the salon constantly. So, you know, I physically made a few phone calls today because to be honest, in this environment, I was worried that did they, were they sick? Did they die? I, you know, and you hate to go yeah, to the You don't know. Side. You don't but, know. The you only know, way to find out is to call. You know, when does it become, is it a pandemic that requires you to go outside of the range of what you would say this is normal contact to make sure they're okay? Um, you know, what, what are some of the ways that you contact clients outside of that? Like, you, know, you hate to say, like, do you have to pick up the phone at some point if you're doing these uh, Facebook Messenger type things? Yeah, well, you know, I, I think that brings up a good point because, like, you know, outside of a pandemic, how were you communicating with your clients before? This is what I think is the game changer. This is why I think that, um, you know, somebody said it earlier in the text comments right in there is that the world, as we know, is forever changed. It's you know, luckily I have been communicating with my clients in this fashion since I started doing my marketing classes two and a half years ago. And it was always something that my coach pushed. She's like, reach out, reach out, reach out. And it is, it, you know, you don't reach out just like you said, you didn't hear from them. You were worried about them. You should be worried about your clients, even when there's not a pandemic. Because, you know, if you're worried about your clients right now, and you're only worried about them in the pandemic, to me, that's more of a, a money issue than it is anything else. And that is what would turn me off as a client, right? All right, so here's, here's your add on. And, I, and I'm sorry to hey, throw- James, a James, let me jump in here a second. I, I, love, I love this, Jackie, you're on, you're on a great thought pattern here. This, for the salons that haven't done this, this needs to be your new norm, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, because 
marketing is about body language, how you speak, and how you communicate with them, whether it's written or whatever. But they will recognize your body language and the way you speak more than any piece of digital information you can give them. So if you're doing personal videos to them, they're seeing your voice, your body language, they're seeing it all, right? Pick up the phone, be real. Yep, yeah, be you. Uh, like, honestly, there's no better brand than yourself, really. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. Here, so here was the add on Jackie is that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. I mean, as a salon owner, right? So the fight over whose formula is it? Whose client really is it? Is it a salon client? Is it my client? And all that bullshit that happens, which I hope eventually goes away with this is that when it comes down to it, so your stylists are home now, maybe they're on unemployment. Maybe you get the loans to hire them back and all that. So you as the owner have to go and say, Hey, my brand and my company ethos and my motto was that we were going to take care of people. We were going to service them, whatever version of that is. And now you're making the contact. Do you think that this is the best time in the world to get those clients back and say, Hey, you know, we're going to have to get all of you back. We're going to have to take 400 clients and get them back into a box, probably in July in New Jersey. Right. Right, Derek. That's who knows. So now yeah, you're going to, yeah. James, right. I'm definitely in July. Um, unfortunately, maybe I don't want to say the A word, right? Don't say the A word. No, the worst word. Thanks to our crazy governor, you never know. Yeah. But honestly, now is the time, like you just said, now is the time to show your brand. It's not the this is my client. It's the salon's client. And now you as a salon owner need to step out there, be personally connected to these clients so they know that they belong to the salon. Now, I don't, you know, I'm not well, talking like slavery or anything. I'm just saying, in general, your brand is connecting with them. And you win them over with your brand versus a stylist winning them over. Right. And I think now more than ever is when you're really going to show your clients what you are, what you're about. This is, you know, what are you about? Are you about making sure that they look and feel their best? Because it's very easy to do that when you're doing their hair on a regular basis. But if you haven't thought about your brand and you haven't thought about what value it is that you give to your clients, what your vision, what your mission is, you're missing the mark. You're late to the game. And now's the time to pull it together and really push forward with that and decide who and what you're for, what you stand for, right? Like if you don't stand for, for something, you'll fall for anything kind of stuff. And it's, you're going to be stuck in this big circle of, of, of playing this game. You're going to be like, uh, oh my God, my friend said it and I loved it. This industry has been caught with their pants down, especially in the United States. And it is unfreaking believable, the lack of organization and structure that we have within our salons. And, you know, if you're one of those salon owners that is, I think owners and operators, owner operators are probably the ones that are, I know I was, I can, I can tell you right now as an owner operator, I was not paying attention to some of the things that I needed to on a regular basis. I really needed to put my time, effort, and money in the spaces that were growing my business and my staff and my systems and my structures so that I could convey to my clients what I was really about. And, you know, I've got a tiny human popping in or a Spider-Man or something. I'm on a call, honey. Yeah. Shut the door on your way out. So I don't know who the other, who the, the two girls that did Frozen, right? So the the one that's the singer and the one that's married to the crazy comedian guy, they had a picture of her and she had an iguana on her head at some zoo thing. And there was a, somebody like sort of side eyeing right next to her. And she's like, this is my toddler during homeschooling. This is my six year old sort of creeping around the corner. So we're all cool with the Jackie. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> I, I promised them sugar. Don't judge me. I'll give it to them. I, I'm ordering G Fuel on Amazon, whatever they need to get by, man. We're all. Right. I'm like, it's A and W root beer down there. Have at it. <laughs> Red Bull, Red Bull, whatever you want. It's all good. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I got, I got off on a little tangent there, but yeah, like if you're not, you know, if you're not showing your clients what, if you can't show your clients what you're about right now, that's the time to get real clear on what you are about because that's where your value comes in. What you offer your clients shouldn't just be hair services. That makes you dispensable. 
the, the true, I think one of the most profound things that I have really discovered is that authenticity is a driving factor for making you indispensable. It really is. So the more authentic you are, the more you identify as a normal human being to other human beings that are normal like you, the more, the more indispensable you actually become to them. The more you're in their life ingrained and woven into the fabric of everything that they do or think, right? When it comes to their, their stuff, right? So it's, you can choose to be like everybody else in this moment, sell your collar kits, plug your conditioning treatments, right? But, but are you reaching out? How are you connecting? How are you entertaining? How are you inspiring your clients in this time when, you know, they can't be doing it? It's, it's a big deal for a lot of them right now. So let's get, there's a couple more things that I want to go over and this is, I feel like we're going, <clears throat> I can do this. Okay. Plan your work, plan your work and work your plan. Take that calendar out, set up a theme for your week, your month, your year, whatever you need to do. Okay, decide how many times that you want to post per day, per week, whatever, and schedule it out. What are you doing to educate, inspire, and entertain? And here, get creative. If you don't have any ideas on, you know, what it is that you guys can be posting, or maybe you're like completely blanked on what you can do for Facebook Lives, um, listen to what clients are telling you at their service. You may have a whole fluke, like, like a whole bunch of clients that come in and you're hearing about, you know, uh, dry hair, static. You're hearing about uh, oily hair, or maybe you're hearing split ends. I don't know. You're hearing about something, but when you're hearing it over and over again, that is the universe's way of saying to you, talk about this. <laughs> so write it down, do a Facebook live, get it out. It's content. And, you know, other things that you can do, what are you seeing on your newsfeed over and over again? Was it some stupid thing from Wish that you keep seeing like all your friends posting screenshots of? Post it on your Facebook page. Like I am telling you, your clients will find it hilarious, like especially if you did. So are there festivals? Are there events going on? Like, did you go to a ribs burn off? Take a picture, like, you know, do a Facebook live. First client that comes to see me, I don't know, gets a scalp massage. I don't know, like just be fun with it, right? Um, and then spread this content over like <clears throat> all the platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, email, you name it, you can spread this content out. Here's the thing, track, test, and measure. That's a big thing of mine. Write down what you're doing because all this content can be recycled. <laughs> you can recycle it. It is fantastic. It's just such an easy way to do it. You can say, oh my gosh, and uh, July was our slow month, but clients we found really liked this foil special that we did. Um, and they loved all the posts that we did around our whatever, conditioning treatments. Mark, mark down what you posted, like you can pull reports on Facebook and it'll tell you, it'll say which posts did well. Look at that, see which one's got more engagement and look to see what's common. Like really kind of, but this is where you're gonna have to take the time out from behind the chair to do this. Figure out what your clients are liking when they see it, right? <clears throat> All right, so connecting on Messenger. I should have put the pro tip up here, but we kind of talked about this already because it was kind of, uh, I feel like James and uh, Derek <clears throat> jumped in and stole this slide at the very beginning, but <laughs> um, master this now, like master this now because you will be on the top of your game. I'll tell you, I'm the only one in the area that I know of that does a full consultation in Facebook Messenger and can nail it like 99.9% .9 of the time. Like we know when a client can come in and get their, like there are very specific consultation questions that we ask. It is very scripted. Um, every stylist, including my front desk staff, know how to talk to a client that has never been into the salon. They know how far of a hair history we need to have. They know, they even are, it, they're even scripted, honestly, to pass it off to a stylist when it's the front desk answering these, these messages. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I, you're, you, like, even last time I feel like I'm, I'm hogging you because you, you always have really awesome points. You can call and me, Jane. In, in a time like this though, where you know, salons are talking about taking the temperature, did you travel, and things that may, you know, it's the, are they HIPAA violations, which by the way, they're not HIPAA violations. Um, you know, the questions you may wanna ask clients, do you think that by doing it through Messenger before they come back into the salon, that that face-to-face -face gives you a little more allowance to ask things that if you sent them a questionnaire, they might be like, why the hell is she asking me these five questions? If you sort of sing song them in and made it something nice and they saw your smiling face that you could get away with asking them things that you think are important to keep your staff safe. 
Oh, I mean, 100%, but I think it goes down to communicating all of that with, you know, hey, like, uh, I'll just use this as an example, because this is kind of probably, I would say this is probably on par with it. So we require a PayPal deposit for all color clients, regardless, like they, ha they either have to have a credit card on file, or they have to do a PayPal deposit. So um, I would venture to guess that asking somebody for some history on, you know, good old Rona, that it's going to be a little touchy, just like it is asking them for 50 bucks for a color deposit. So it's all about communicating that, scripting it, and making it um, aware that this is now a policy. So it's, you know, and when I say communicate across all platforms too, it's like if this is the thing that your salon is now doing, like if you've had a temperature within seven days or whatever you're, whatever you guys decide is what you're going to do, you got to communicate it. I would make it your landing page on your, on your website. Like this is, this is what we're doing to keep our staff safe. This is how we intend to keep you safe. Um, if you're booking through, uh, messenger or you're booking through email we are going to send you a questionnaire because it's important to us that our staff is safe and you know we may not service you at this time and we ask that if you've been sick we you know it's it's just like any good cancellation policy it's just how you communicate it and this perfect segue i think right here into the beginning is say what you mean and mean what you say you know like I think that people are going to be fine with what you're asking them for as long as that there as long as there is clarity around whatever it is that you're communicating. So don't be afraid to say it. If your policy is that they pay half of whatever their service is up front, then that should be displayed and communicated across multiple places. I mean, put it put a picture in your bathroom, put um, put a, a little picture frame at your front desk. Uh, Put it at the bottom of your receipt if you want to. I mean, there's so many ways and places that you can communicate all these things around. And, you know, it's just, uh, it's just policy. You know, it's uh, no shirt, no shoes, no service. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Spicoli. That, listen, Spicoli should be uh, on, right on everybody's front door when you walk in. If they don't get it, they should be allowed in. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. So, um, you know, and... Going into the say what you mean and mean what you say, consider companies scripting for clarity of brand and business voice. And you know, when I say that, it's like, I don't, I don't necessarily want all my stylists to sound like me, but I want the message and the mission and the vision of my company to be conveyed across all of the people that I employ so that my clients are all received the way that I want them to be received and that their journey is the way that I have anticipated in my head, the journey that they go through. And that includes being spoken to on the phone, uh, how emails are sent. Um, you know, it's just uh, scripting is uh, scripting is one of the things if you're trying to scale your salon, your small time, two, three chairs, you start scripting your stuff, you'll grow quicker than you can possibly even imagine because you're going to be making, you know, uh, you're going to be making changes in your business that are going to help people run it without you managing all those small fires. You'll, I, I, I used, I started scripting because I started getting style. Like, well, what am I supposed to say to her? And I'm like, Oh, Jiminy Christmas. Aren't you, don't you do hair? <laughs> so I started scripting and I have tons of scripts. Um, you can save messages in Facebook messenger and you can store them so that like, uh, maybe you have a client that I have a hesitant PayPal deposit that goes in, populates with their name. This is our policy. I'm sorry that you feel that way. The other options that we have are this, this, and this. Like, um, this is to protect your time on the schedule to make sure that you can keep, you know, it's, it's, I have everything, every possible scenario I have a script for. It just is, it, it just is, and it's stored somewhere. Some people prefer to keep them uh, in a binder. Some people keep them in a Excel spreadsheet, whatever, but script everything. Um, so anyway, other things that you can do on Messenger, you can share images, you can send videos, you can send voice notes. There's so many things that you can do that are gonna help you connect. Um, you can do this obviously in text message too. I mean, even here's another idea. If you're, not, if you're not connected on Facebook Messenger with most of these people, which you may not be if you haven't been using Facebook in that capacity, get a $30 phone from Metro PCS and start adding your clients in and text them. If you don't have Salon Ninja to do it, get a $30 phone so that you can message with your clients and start getting that relationship in with them. Or y'all probably have an iPhone or some Galaxy Note hanging around somewhere from a previous upgrade. Dust that off, use it. Figure out a way to connect with your clients and don't, you know, this, 
the thing that'll set you apart is not, well, I can't do that because I don't have blah, blah, blah. It's how can I do it? Change your mindset. How can I make this happen? I don't have my clients on Facebook Messenger. How the hell does she have 800 people or contacts in Messenger? I don't even have 30. Well, it's not about how do I have it. It's about how can you connect with the clients that are in your database? So right now you have what you have. So either change it or innovate, right? That's what you got. So ask your clients for selfies, show them images and screenshots. Like I'll tell you one thing, clients, my, this is how I grew my business really quickly with this. I would go to hair show after hair show, after class, after class. And I would take pictures of the, the hairstyles that I thought some of my clients would like. And I would send them to them in text message. This was back when I had a flip phone, <laughs> but um, I would just send them a message and say like, Oh my God, I was just at this class. You would love this. They love that. You can do that in Facebook messenger. And it's great. Um, and encourage them to connect authentically and without reservation with you inside Facebook Messenger. Ask them what's going on. If you knew that they went on vacation, ask them about vacation. You know, and the best thing about Messenger, all of the information is there. You don't have to try to recall a conversation. You could scroll up and read it. That's the part that I freaking love about it because I am a space case when it comes to trying to remember. Oh yeah, she went on vacation. What was that last year or this year? <laughs> I've got so many clients that sit in my chair. I know they travel. I just don't know like, oh yeah, that was like, I guess last January, huh? <laughs> so it's all there. It's all saved there. You guys can totally uh, take advantage of that. Um, touching on emojis again, they're a clever way to add personality to your business's voice. Um, you can put these in your scripting, your emails, you can put them basically everywhere. And think about how you use emojis with your friends. And you know, I, I'm sure that you do. Um, maybe they're not the same emojis you want to share. Maybe you got some tacos and some eggplants hanging out there, but you don't have to use those. You can use the ones that you like using on a regular basis. Um, it's just, it's just conveying your, your energy and all of that, just um, the personality, really. It's a mindset match. Are you prim and proper? Are you cheeky mf -er, right? Like, I am cheeky. Like, there are lots of um, cheeky emojis that go into their, uh, gosh. Um, like, for example, like our, our, our referral cards for our men that come in it's like it's a picture of a man getting a scalp massage and it says let's do this again very much a connotation under that but it's like it, you know it's just cheeky it's just something that you know is part of my brand so what is your brand if you're prim and proper you might not use the emoji you might use the little guy with the monocle right because he's prim and proper like just use emojis that speak to your brand <clears throat> So scripting, and this is the last little part, guys. I know this is kind of, I've got you for so long. So for those of you that are still here, thank you so much. So scripting, predefined dialogue that serves to streamline communication around specific talking points. Sounds like a lot of words, <laughs> but it's just an easy way to say it's, it's how I want my staff to talk to my clients that come in the salon. That's it. And why we do it, it's just an easy way to manage your business's voice, maintain brand identity, and delegating client relations to team members. I can't tell you how much it took off of my plate to be able to delegate to an assistant who's worked for me for only four weeks, Facebook Messenger leads. She, can, she knows how to talk to them. She knows how to answer them. It's super helpful because then I'm not, man, Facebook Messenger for a hot minute for us was becoming like almost a 20 hour a week job, like doing our consultations in there. Kept them out of the salon, but like, you know, it, it got to the point where like we had to, it was innovate or die. We had to systemize it. Otherwise we were going to be spending all of our time talking to our clients on Facebook Messenger. And that was not what I wanted. So I systemized it. I scripted it. We started saving the scripts. We started testing and measuring and getting client responses. And that's all you guys got to do is just see how your clients respond to it. It's, it's that easy. And the way that you're going to script, I know that this doesn't give you scripting in here, but you're going to identify your topic, your target, your benefits, and your pain points. Um, this is, you're, pick a topic like blonding, you know, uh, fantasy hair color is a great one, you know, that you can start doing your scripting around. Anytime somebody sees that you have an offer, they always want unicorn hair. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, but it's, that's your topic, right? So now your target is how you're going to, you know, how you're going to talk to these people, right? Like, what is it that they're trying to have done? What are the benefits of whatever, like maybe, maybe this unicorn hair color is I need to get them into my, I want to be blonde package. So that's my target. Here's the benefits. The benefits are in one service, we can get you to here. 
The pain points are you might not be able to get to the color you want, right? So you develop scripting around all of this so that you have things that are already pre-made and pre-done for you that you can just plug in there. Because there's nothing worse than, you know, if you've got a swipe phone or you're typing or using voice to text, you want to just be able to have an auto response that's personalized. So that is what scripting will do for you. Uh, let's see here. And, you know, voice and branding with more of a note on this, your scripting should have a feel, a cadence, and a rhythm. It should, it should sound like your salon. And you, we, I talked about this. You want to create templates for how you want your clients, how you want to speak to the client. Train your staff and your front desk how to utilize these scripts. And, you know, I always go back to this, like we have a script for consultation and <laughs> I struggled with this because people were always like, oh, make this script your own. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to edit this and do this and change that. But no, it's make it your own by knowing it and then say it how you would say it. Same words, just keep it scripted so that keep it simple. <laughs> That's it. Um, when you're scripting, imagine as many scenarios as possible so that you can just be prepared. I mean, it's, it, you guys know your business is better than anybody else. You know what your clients are asking for on a regular basis. And anytime it comes up, script it out, save it, store it, move on. Um, Here's something to ask yourself when it comes to voice and branding. If you guys are finding it hard to figure out what it is that, you know, how do I talk? What do I say? Which emojis do I use? If your business were a person, how would they be? Would they be a man? Would they be a woman? Would they be young? Would they be old? Would they wear glasses? Would they not? What, what books would they read? What car would they drive? What food would they eat? How would they take their coffee? And when you figure out your avatar, then you can turn around and you can figure out how that avatar would actually speak. And that is one of the best ways that you can really just um, get a feel for your brand is to create that avatar. And y'all make a bit, change your bitmoji if you want, you know, so that you can get like a good idea of what she would wear, or, you know, he, you know, you know, whatever, just if it helps with a visual, do it. You know, is, is your avatar relaxed, geeky, cheeky, silly, serious, practical, pragmatic, like, what are they? You know, how would they respond to some of these questions? And respond in character, respond in avatar. Um, I, uh, oh yeah, again, and I put this other part in here, teach your clients what they need to know. So in your scripting, you can, you can absolutely do this. You can absolutely keep your scripts for this. So I, I wish that I could go into, this is such a lot of information. Um, I wish I could go into this more in depth, but we've already been on this for like, you know, an hour and 15 minutes. So if you guys have value in- I'm not losing anybody. Go what? into as much as you want to. Oh, well, I mean, it's a lot to go into because it's, I mean, the scripting and stuff itself could- Jackie, you need to do a third part, I, I think. Give me another second. Yeah, number three. I can do number three. Ask the- yeah, okay. ask Guys, what do you want? What do you want me to go more into? I can do Jack, a number. Can you, go, can you go back one slide? Maybe. <laughs> nope. Wait. So I, I'm, I just wanted, to, and, I, and I'm only busting you about Spicoli and Mr. Hand behind me because you know, no, no shirt, no shoes, no dies. I didn't even know. notice it until now. Yeah, you're a little young for that, but you know, it's the, us old guys on here know that. But, you know, I feel like what you're saying about having a cadence and a rhythm and talking about what your mission is and, and you know, the different things for your clients, you know, when we go back to work, everybody should realize that this sanitized version of what it's going to be like is you're going to miss some of the sing-songy, I got a hug, I talked about my new dog, what have you been up to? There's going to be a little bit more of a methodic way of how you're going to have to do the, the regular work you do. Plus, you're going to be in a time crunch, right? You're going to see one client at a time, probably. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, listen, I love you. I miss you. Sit down. Shut up. I got to do your color. I'm trying to make money because now I'm going to book half the amount of time. So I think that having that branding component of, hey, in advance, this is what we've gone through. Maybe you use Messenger. Maybe you use Zoom and you do a call. So that, that whole part, it's like, hey, listen, I understand it's been crazy for you, too, but... I've been trying to get unemployment for four weeks. My company didn't get the PPP loan. Um, I haven't been able to hone my craft because I have my three kids at home. So my mannequin head has got crazy glue and silly putty and slime in it. And probably and still do. Right? 
So yeah. but there's something to that. And, and I think that's that, you know, Jackie and I talked offline, like I said last time about this. That's one of the strengths of her program is that it's so much more appropriate right this second. Um, so that's why you have to do a third part. Yeah, but, I can so totally do a third part, but like, I mean, Jackie, with, with what James said, talk, talk to me about how important it is to communicate while they're in the chair and then follow. So the, it used to be that we would follow up after just a rebook an appointment, right? Now it's going to be about personal connection before, after, mm -hmm. during the service, right? And a lot of that's going to be just what you're talking about. Your branding, your digital marketing, things like that. You're going to have to talk to them after the service to still make them feel comfortable. So I think that our communication is going to have to step up tenfold to 100%. what it was in the past. You know, not only that, like, so I, when James was talking, I kept thinking, like, how awesome would it be if you guys had a package in place for these clients that are coming in that are like one and one time, one at a time, right? Like, you know, um, there might be square footage rules in place for, you know, if you're 1400 square feet, you're allowed to have X amount of stylists working as long as it's like a bowling alley in every other lane or something like that, you know, but how awesome would it be if you could have a package already set up for your clients that you could already have thought this through and you know it's going to build in your extra color it's going to build in all of the extra services that they need and it's going to fill in your time and make your time all productive time rather than unproductive where you're just twiddling your thumbs waiting for something to finish um not only would you have that but like thinking about this from a communication standpoint a uh, quick five question questionnaire before they come in via email, text message, Facebook messenger, like, you know, streamlining. I mean, your consultations aren't going to take that long anyway. And clients are honestly going to come in probably expecting to spend a little bit more than they had previously. But, you know, you could streamline all of this so that your starting point, you know, at two o'clock is actually being started at two o'clock. And maybe you're cutting them first and then applying your color and, you know, you're booking with an assistant so she can do the finish work. And it's just kind of like this, you know, nice little streamlined thing, but you're gonna have to communicate that, you know? Sorry, Jackie, I'm killing you. I, I apologize. <laughs> if they, and you have really good info and like I said before, but what you're saying about the messenger component, if everybody may go back to work with masks on, I think what you're saying about that possibility of having some type of virtual consultation, whatever your medium of choice is, it might not even be necessary. It might be paramount. It, you might have to do it. Yeah. You might have to say to your stylist, hey, you have eight clients. You know, I need a booking window. Whether we have to pay them hourly to do that or whatever, who cares? They may have to get that out of the way, see their client's hair, talk to them off the ledge of what they've been going through for the last X, Y, Z months. because. You might be masked up, and if anybody's gone to the grocery store with a mask on in the last bunch of weeks, at some point you start to feel like Darth Vader, right? You're like, you know, you're you're hyperventilating. You're like, Amici, is there something wrong with me? That guy doesn't have a mask, and you start to lose your mind. Imagine when they come into the salon, and we're like, you know, it's like you're giving birth. I'm I'm, I'm saying that you're like giving birth, right? You're like snapping the gloves on. And you're like, all right, get in the stirrups. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna do your hair. Kids. <laughs> Sorry, I was just... Yeah, I know you have kids, so you get that, but... I just... Yeah, it's... It is. It's, it's going to be a whole different ball game. And I, I mean, we have to really think of every single scenario and possibility. And, you know, the, like I, I've been doing virtual consultations for two years. I have it perfected. Maybe that would be... I mean, if y'all want to hear about that, just, uh, I guess, put like a number one in the, the comment box if it's a virtual consultation. Um, I'm happy to do that. I'll, I can share screenshots and things like that of how the consultations have gone. And um, I can even share the follies that I've had too, because we've had some pretty ticked off people because they can't get what they want. Or, you know, we ran a special and, you know, they think <laughs> they're going to get like, I want to be blonde and unicorn hair for like 99 99 <laughs> So yeah, it's, um, I think it's going to take some, uh, major preparing for us. And I, I would venture to guess that most owner operators aren't prepared and systemized as well as they could be. 
and now is the time to use this pause to systemize all that stuff and really think ahead. And I know a lot of people are like, I've seen it in my group. I've seen it in your group, Derek, like people are really starting to, you know, owners are, they're trying to get a, a handle on what's going to happen. How are we going to be doing business? How many boxes of gloves do we need? Like, are we able to do hair without gloves? Like, you know, how's that looking? How's that going to work? You know, if I've got 11 chairs, can five of them be filled? Can do, or, you know, can I have six? Like, do I buy an extra one and pretend? Like, <laughs> it's just, it's, you know, we, nobody knows what our states are going to mandate. I mean, like, it's looking like they're going to start opening Ohio back up here um, within the next couple of weeks. And salons will likely be one of the last ones to be open. So um, I don't know. They leave me out too much longer. I may never go back. <laughs> get used to this right so we, so okay so here we talked about a lot so i guess if, are we getting ones for that the virtual consultation is that what people want to see next all right well andrew just send me an email um my email is actually working now so you can send me the date that that will be definitely we'll book you. you got it okay you, so all right to get together because we just set that up as a new platform inside of salon ninja for you um oh. we just do get it rolling um yeah We've got master stylists and virtual consultations. So um, Perfect. it's going to be important going forward. I, I think communication, and you, you spoke to this, communication is key right now before, during, and after. There's 100%. no more like people just coming through the door, rushing them in a chair, and, and you're done, and you know, ho hoping they'll rebook in four or six weeks. Things are going to be a lot different now. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to be, they are. And I mean, I'm just kind of rolling with the punches. And I, if, you know, if I make a plea to anybody out there, roll with the punches, because that's all you can do right now. What, what you resist persists. So it's embrace it and just kind of like enroll with it. It is, it, it just is. So um, I, y'all know what we covered, right? Building trust virtually, creating content for social media. We chatted about what our clients want to see on Facebook and it's not before and afters. I can promise you that while they like them, it's not all before and afters. Um, connecting in messenger and scripting for all of this. Um, but how to begin, right? Like how many of you are so overwhelmed? Put a number two in the, in the, uh, chat box. Are you guys overwhelmed with everything that you've seen from leadership to numbers to marketing to like, Lord only knows, like all of the other things that you've been watching that, you know, 20 plus episodes here and you just don't know where to friggin' start. Like it's, there's so much you've been sitting, you've been taking eight hours worth of classes every day. You got dishes piled up in your sink, you know, whatever it is that's going on, you know, you just don't know where to start, where the hustle starts. Like it, Oh, dang it. Sorry, guys. This is what happens. Hustle beats talent when talent doesn't hustle. This is one of my most favorite quotes. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk said it. I don't know if he was the original one, but he's the one that I heard it from first. But right now is the time to hustle. And it, it's that confusion. I'm just going to kind of shed some light on, on a couple of things. I say pick one. And if, if you need to put post-its on the wall and throw a dart at it, throw spaghetti at it, whatever sticks you, you, you do first, but pick one thing, commit to it because the magic happens when you commit, right? That's, that's part of the be do have, like you got to speak it, you got to think it, and then you got to do it, right? So right now you have all these components in front of you. You've got all of these things that you could be doing. Pick one and start. And when you get that, it is literally done is the new perfect. It is done is the new perfect. Get it done, get it implemented, and then have somebody else help you tweak, test, and measure it and move on to the next part. Maybe it is leadership. Maybe it is marketing. Maybe it is scripting. But the magic is going to happen when you commit to choosing one of those things. And whatever that thing is, Commit to it and finish it. Don't worry about it being perfect. There's no such thing as perfection. I promise you, done is the new perfect. That is my that is my thing. If that helps you, I hope to God that helps you. Um, with that being said, if you like the information that is in here, I am doing, it's probably likely going to be a six-week course. It is the, it, I only have seven spaces for this, um, but this is something that I am going to help you guys set up all of your packages, go over the cost analysis, your profits, everything like that is going to be done in a private group. Um, we're going to look at what's selling, what's not selling, scripting, um, 
I'm going to give you guys crash courses in Canva on how to put together offers. Like this is my Mother's Day offer from last year. I'll probably dust this one off again if we're even allowed to do Mother's Day. Um, but I am committed to helping you guys figure out your menu for this. I'm going to go into new service strategies. We'll talk about scripting for all of this and upgrading as just a way of life for you guys. And this is all going to be something that I will work closely with you guys one on one. I'm only taking eight people for this entire thing and I have seven slots left. Um, if you guys are interested in it, <clears throat> sorry, I, I cannot use this PowerPoint. It's not even a PowerPoint. Um, it is called Refresh Your Revenue, and you can go right to my website, which is sheetgeek.academy, um, or you can email me. Um, same thing as last time. If you guys want these slides or you want any information from me on this, I'm happy to send you the slides. I, I was able to save those. Um, if you guys are interested in doing this, I'm going to leave the doors open until April 24th. Um, class does start on Monday, so if you guys do not come in until the 24th, you'll get a replay of the very first lesson. Um, but I have seven seats left. So if you guys are interested, I'd be happy to have you all there. Um, if not, you're welcome to stay on my Sheet Geek uh, Mastermind page and I would, I'll help you guys there too. You can post and ask your peers for help. It's totally up to you. Um, let's see here. And with that being said, there it is. If you guys are, if you guys are not already in my group, please join it. Um, there's the link right there. You'll have to write it down because it's not a hot link. <laughs> um, and email me if you guys want the slides. I'm happy to help you guys in any way that I can. Um, especially through this time. It's this, this is a rough time for everybody, right? Um, and with that, thank you guys so much. This was fun for me to do. I know there was a lot of information. Um, so if you, uh, if you guys, are there any questions? Like, can we open it up for uh, questions or anything like that? It's open right now, Jackie. Everybody put, put up your questions right now for Jackie, if you have any before you get out of here. Um, again, don't forget to get in Jackie's group. Uh, email Jackie if you're interested in the coaching program. Uh, fantastic stuff. Uh, Jackie's branding is on point, probably better than anybody I've ever seen in the industry. Um, you know, I don't want your head to blow up, Jackie, but I've seen salons that have millions and millions of dollars, franchises, and uh, Jackie's branding is better than any I have seen, hands down. So definitely follow Jackie for the branding. And part of that flows obviously into social media. Um, you know, it's kind of kind of a given. So, Jackie, you were awesome tonight as always. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions on here? Are we pretty? Uh... Take a look. Everybody's going crazy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we'll be on Salon Ops YouTube. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the Salon Ops Two Words uh, uh, YouTube channel. We need 300 people. We're at 200 right now. And I know we have over 300. We had 600 views last night. So what, what's keeping you guys? Oh, hey, um, Jackie, one question just came in from Rebecca. She said, are you having your stylists call their clients or are you or your front desk calling the clients? Whatever, whatever variation. It's, through, it's through whatever. Whatever. Honestly, at this point, it's about connection. Um, my my staff have made it clear that they would like to come back. Um, so I, you know, um, I'll hey, do. Jackie, my do me do me a favor. Pop up your last your last screen with all your contact information. Leave that up. Sure. Uh oh, did I do it right? There it Will is. That work? Just go, yeah, just go full screen on that. Oh my God, hold on. <laughs> okay, there you go, perfect. Oh, you had it. I did? <laughs> What'd you do? There I you go, know. perfect. It's not, it's not changing it. No, that, that's, per that's perfect, right there, oh. Jackie. So everybody that's asking questions, how do you contact Jackie? There you go, right? So make sure you uh, take this information down. We can chat in the little boxes as we're waiting. Any other questions, gang? Um, it was a great presentation, Jackie. I mean, just crazy good. I mean, we were we were only on Zoom tonight, and at one point we had about a hundred Zoomers. So, oh, awesome! Um, I, I wish Facebook was live tonight, but yeah, we'll shoot Facebook tomorrow. So, <laughs> so <laughs> but, you know, uh, I, you could do I'll a repost this. Yeah, I'll repost this, and um, you can do the same. I'll send it over to you and. Hopefully everybody gets a uh, good handle on it.
So, so go back to the question, like, you know, for, for me, it doesn't matter. How would, how would somebody sign up through email they're asking? Um, well, you can go right to my Facebook, or I'm sorry, right to my website, sheetgeek.academy, and the landing page is actually more information about the class and what you'll get. And I have, um, I've got quite a bit of bonus material that's going to be there. Um, but this will be a live class with me. So as long as you guys are able to attend the Zoom, um, the Zoom calls and everything like that, otherwise it'll be just a replay stored in a private group. It'll be private coaching group. Great. People are asking, is this a one-time thing or is it an ongoing from time to time? Um, um, I can answer that. Jackie and I will be working together in the future, so there will be future <laughs> opportunities. I think I just got hired. Does that mean I'm going back to the salon? No, <laughs> no, no, we're going to drag you back in here again. Um, yeah, so I think that it really depends on um, how it all goes, like, because there's a lot of information that probably if you guys sign up for this first one, it's going to be a lot more information. I'm going to probably end up in, is my best guess, is making these, this is probably going to be a big meaty course that would probably be three or four mini courses, because I'm going to go into scripting and profit, like, you know, working on figuring out how to make sure that your packages, your services are actually profitable. Um, not digging in like Steve Gomez kind of digging in, but like I'm going to be digging in to show you easy ways to just like, okay, this is wh what I need to be making. So this is how much my package should be, you know, to make a decent profit on this. Um, we'll start there so that you know how to. So we Jackie, we're going to, Andrew and I are going to be having a uh, Zoom coming up on the Salon Ninja platform. And I'd like to bring you in on that. Obviously, James will be in on that because he's been using it for a little bit. And um, uh, you and I can work on that beforehand. But some of these things you've uh, talked about tonight, I, there's the little human. My mini me. <laughs> so anyway, so we, we want you on that episode also. Yeah, I would love that. So, you know, so I want to go back and touch on the question of, am I let, you know, are my stylists reaching out to clients? hundred percent they are because I can't manage all of them. I have systems and structures and I have delegated things and I trust my team and, you know, I'm not, not all money is good money. I'm not going to fight or chase for it. So if they do leave, um, I don't think that they will, but if they did, um, it, good luck, you know, for them, I, I wish them all well. And I know that that's probably not necessarily a topic that we, could, I mean, we should talk about it because Silas, I mean, the reality is some of them are probably going to leave and move and shift and go around. But um, I, I love it that they keep in contact with their clients um, because it is relational. And then I just get the text message on whatever it is that the client needs. So if I need to prepare a bag of hair product for a client, I go in, I schedule, I message the client, schedule the time. It's just a nice way to systemize and streamline that for myself. So, hey, so um, Patty, Patty, sorry, Patty, Patty, one of our educators. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. You were. She's just asking, what's a good first step to begin to get clients to communicate on Messenger? Uh, that's an excellent question. I love this one. Post something and have them drop a, an emoji or a comment and you'll message them as the call to action. So no longer, I mean, you can use your, your social media for, like, have you guys ever noticed that on social media, when you have somebody, you post something, when they comment, you have the option to message them. You can't any time before that. But if you get permission from them to message them, you're allowed to message them. So if you post a picture of, I don't know, some buttery blonde, and you're just like, oh my God, comment below with your favorite emoji if you love this and we'll message you details. They'll comment below with a heart, with a mermaid, whatever. That is a great way to get them. You got, you've already got permission now to talk to them in Messenger. Done. It's up to and you. Remember, to remember, now with the new rules, you have to respond within 24 hours. Otherwise, it's done. I need to, I need to read this. I haven't read this. So you yeah, can't. It's really, it's really aggravating, to be honest with you. If, if somebody communicates with you, you have to answer them within 24 hours or you, or you cannot respond to them according to the new Facebook Messenger rules. Uh, I, I think they're just being stupid, but whatever it is, it is. So. It doesn't matter what we think. 
yeah, yeah. That's inter- Facebook, where, Facebook is God, right? <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look this up. I I haven't. I've been so engrossed in some other things right now, um, combing through financials and things like that. But no, no, I, I get that. The only the only reason I know it is obviously our automated platform has Facebook Messenger in it, and we just got a message that said the new rules are that if you don't send them an automated message within 24 hours, you can't communicate with them in a response. An automated, okay. So how does that- So so in other words, your automations can respond to them in a human tone within 24 hours. Oh, you're talking from a bot standpoint though, right? Yeah, if you don't, I mean, obviously personal communication, you can jump on whatever you want. Okay, that was where- Yeah, if you wanna put them in any type of sales flow, um, that sounds human. Yes. You have to do it within 24 hours. Yes. So I, so I had been using a bot platform. Uh, I had one for about two years. I'm actually letting it fall this year because I can't communicate with any of my clients. I've got over, you know, 3000 leads inside my bot and I can't mm-hmm. talk to any of them. So I'm just, I'm done with it. And manually has honestly generated more income than my bot ever has. My bot never paid for itself. Well, manually. Well, has manual, manual is personal, right? So it's totally. So, so, so even when we send like, so our, from our platform, Salon Ninja, when we send messages, all the messages are designed to sound like it's a human talking yeah. to you. So it says, hey, Jackie, um, glad you signed up for my offer. Can I book you an appointment? Things like that. So they think it's the person speaking to them. That's the way all of your messaging should be if it's automated. Yeah, obviously the best case scenario is if you have time is to communicate with them personally, right? I mean, so. yeah, I think if you're going to automate anything, like I have noticed 100% that I am preferring the automated emails as me personally, like everything from like the financial world to like some of the the clothing shops that I belong to. Like I'm getting emails now that are clearly automated sequencing and I don't hate it because I actually, I can get it. I know that they know that I've opened it. I don't feel obligated to respond to it unless there's something in there, a call to action that I want to reply to. Um, you know, I, I can't stress enough, like, and I'll tell you, like always have a backup of this. So if you're going to use a platform that is not indigenous to your salon, and I mean like Facebook or, you know, even salon ninja, like export your, your information on a regular basis and store it in multiple places. Um, don't do not a Facebook messenger crashed on me one time. And I think I probably gained like a million gray hairs um, in the six days that it was down. I was literally like, I, I was sick to my stomach because I had built my business for like six months on Facebook messenger. And then it freaking crashed. I couldn't see any of the contacts in there. I had messaged my chat. It was my chat bot not syncing properly with my Facebook platform, Messenger platform. And there was a setting that was not toggled correctly. And I, I mean, I like literally almost vomited because I like, I had spent so much money on the chat bot. I had spent all of this money on Facebook ads and marketing. And I had like, like 800 leads. I couldn't see them. I wasn't getting okay. notifications. Technology, technology can kill you, right? Ooh. But you're right. You always have to back up your technology. And on top of that, I'm going to tell everybody on here right now, the new norm is going to be bots through text messaging. Yeah. And and that may be, and it probably will be, and email is very much alive. Yeah. Oh, oh very, very yeah. much alive. And we have to still, learn how, still, how still. to use it really well, how to write well, how to communicate well, how to have good sequences, automations, mm-hmm. but it works. Yeah. It's very effective when you're speaking one-to-one, very personal but that's a whole other subject for another day. No, but it's true. I mean, you know, some, some of you guys may be great visually and you may be able to put together an amazing offer, but you know, if you're not writing and the copyright isn't, you know, the copywriting isn't on point, you know, that's when you can, there are, there's so many books I can, I honestly, I have a page started on my, uh, sheet geek Academy website for book recommendations. I'm going to get that live this week, I think, because I have just been, I have consumed so many books when it comes to marketing and um, like just branding and things like that, that I know would really help you and, you know, just pop them in and audible or whatever. And I mean, there's content for days there. You start to really think about things differently. Yeah. It's yeah. Email is great. I'm, I'm actually a little frustrated with myself that I haven't been on my email game and I had been relying on 
te uh, Facebook Messenger for more than anything, then so I and I have to diversify well, more. Yeah, yeah. So, so the deal is when you're messaging clients, always remember this multi channel. This is what I, I kind of teach multi channel messaging, right? So, if one platform is not working, another might. So you hit them from every avenue possible mm -hmm. and make sure you maintain your data. What I mean by that is you control the data, you own the data, and you have the contacts backed up. That yeah. is probably the most important thing. You know, there were, there were a long time ago, there was a rumor that Facebook might kill, you know, Facebook ads, right? Oh my God, people were freaking out, right? So, so like what happened to all my people on Facebook ads? Well, you know what? You should have that data. You should have all those people yeah. in the database somewhere yeah. so that if you need to market, you need to remarket, right? Right. I don't, the fa Facebook is never going to do that. It's probably one of their no, largest no, no. generations. That, that, that is, that's insane. They people are people the love to care that, though, that's right? Their money. So it's fear, fear, fear based marketing, right? But yeah. ultimately, it, it boils down to control your own data. If you like, have a database, you need to have that database backed up on Google Drive somewhere. I am I am waiting for the day that Facebook announces that they're going to have like a <clears throat> a premium business page model where you pay a fee annually and you get help from them. <laughs> I'll be the first one on board well, for that. Okay. <laughs> well, LinkedIn has a premium. Yeah, right? but I mean. No, 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 no. But Facebook will. Yeah, they will. They're going to have to. I mean, it's. I'll tell you what, anytime I get those uh, emails about, you want to speak with your marketing specialist, Facebook advertise, I'm like, I'll take two sessions, please. <laughs> like, send me another email. <laughs> yeah. So, well, this was, this was Jackie, fun. For me. Jackie, so I got to thank you again. You're wonderful, personable, real, and brilliant. Thank you. So, um, with that, uh, any other questions for Jackie before we kick off for the evening? I did nope. see here, somebody Jackie, up there, uh, Galaxy S10. Um, yeah. You know, I the bot question. Can any <laughs> of you do a more in-depth class on the bot to text thing in the future? So I think it's, um, that's going to be in Derek's court because that's salon ninja well, that's going to be in wealth our court <laughs> oh, well yeah we help in the flow of the sale you'll, you'll, you'll teach how to, how to do it personal and i'll teach the technical side this so, is yeah, how this is the button you click yeah. and then jackie will tell you what you put in the dialogue box <laughs> <laughs> perfect all right uh, it was great having everybody on tonight thanks everybody for showing up to the beauty business reset don't forget you can watch all the review or uh, all the replays of your favorite episodes on Salon Ops YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you subscribe. We need 300 subscribers so we can customize the channel. I think we're up to 200 and something right now. So everybody that's on here, there's 54 people on here right now. Please subscribe. That's another 54 people. It takes you two seconds of your time and we're all putting out that time to give you all this content. So um, have a great evening, everybody. Tomorrow night, we will be off for the first time in many weeks. Um, <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, James, right? Hey, man, so, I Andrew, just, I'm just saying. saying like, Thank you. You know. <laughs> so, I need to, so I need Nicholas, to process all of Jackie's information that she gave me. It's like, it's, so, it's yeah. so good. I need to sit a whole night. Are you going to email me one of those cheeky emails? <laughs> for the I already slide? did. <laughs> <laughs> I already sent you like nine text messages right now while you were on, because I know you're going to get them afterwards. Yeah, I've got everything I do not disturb. So, well, awesome. Cool. This Everybody have awesome. a fantastic night and a fantastic tomorrow night. And we will see you on uh, Sunday night with Patty Mead, right? I think Patty's on Sunday, Andrew? I believe so. I don't have the schedule right in front of me, but I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's Patty Mead. Uh, yeah. Nicholas French is rescheduling. He had, a, he had a, uh, another commitment he had to deal with. So he'll be on in a future class. But Patty Mead will be on Sunday night. And... Uh, We'll be right back at it for another God only knows how many days. It's a great, a great Sunday night and a great week coming up. So we, we will see you all then. And, and Jackie, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're so thank welcome. Thank you so much, Jackie.
Thank Always you. Always appreciate it. James, Thanks. Andrew, thank you for your time. All right, guys. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Mark. All right, guys. Good night. I don't know how to get out of the screen, by the way. I don't know what happened.